Hello again. Today I'm going to talk on a subject that I've just heard on YouTube recently and um, it's regarding the question that's being asked a lot of people which uh, the same question that everyone really would like to know I would think is uh, who really rules the world? I recently saw a video with Rob Moore, who makes some great interview uh, videos on YouTube, and he had a couple of people with him, and he asked them the question. And he asked other people, Andrew Tate, etc. And also I watched a really great interview right, by GB Resistance, who interviewed Andrew Bridges, which I do highly recommend you go and watch, because Andrew reveals a lot of the dark stuff that goes on in politics and in government uh, for which he has suffered the hand, at the hands of himself and is kind of whistleblowing in a way but he's, he's just stating as a matter of fact but also for him it was a question who really rules the world so I wanted to give my perspective I'm not obviously a great media influencer or have any desire to be. Uh, I'm not a politician you know, of any kind or anything like that. Or someone who has had, but it's interesting to hear from these people who have had to rub shoulders or come in contact with these people, the, that, that level of society, let's say, and what their opinions are on, on who rules the world as far as they can see from their perspective. And generally the answer is, I think for Andrew Bridgen it was Agenda 2030, which was governing most things that are going on at the moment. And that's as far as he was at least willing to say. Uh, so Agenda 2030, and who's connected to that is the WEF and the WHO, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization and some think tanks, of course, around the world, because they're all following to the same beat of the drum from the dictates from these say, organizations. And others have said, I think, money is ruling the roost, as in always follow the money, which is always a good place to start, follow the money. Uh, the massive corrupting thing it's wealth and when you have all the wealth in the world what do you want power more power of course and this is really where their perspectives go so for me personally this is these are layers the control of planet earth we're not i'm not talking about just western societies or the eastern societies with the BRICS nations etc I'm talking planet-wide or worldwide. From my perspective and from my own experiences, and my experiences are not, are not the same as these people, but I have been watching with interest the functions and what these organisations have been doing, and I can see how corrupt they are and how corrupt they've been and what's going on from the level that they're talking about as many of us can, but um, I'm going to try and talk beyond that, uh, or look into it a bit more depth. Everyone must come to their own decision and their own understanding, which is based on your own personal experience, level of understanding spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. Truth is a truth, it's indivisible. The truth is just simply the truth of whatever. Uh, people can try and hide the truth, can try and cover up the truth, and can try and distract you from the truth, but they can't change the truth. But I would say that the truth is also individual, it's unique to each and every one of us. Because we all have our own personal 
Um, own personal visors, if you like, are windows through which we see the world, which are always distorted. And they're distorted by our own biases, our own perceptions, our experiences, what we think is true or not true, what we understand or we don't understand. And everyone has a unique experience in life. You can live with several other people in the same place and all have jobs, etc. and think that you're all together and all experience the same things. But you talk to each individual, you'll find they all have a very different experience of living in a place or experience of other people or experience of life. This is how it's supposed to be. This is not wrong. There's no wrong or right. But it's not wrong. This is right. This is how it's supposed to be. This is how life it's designed for you to have a personal, individual experience. So your perspective on the truth will be either slightly this way, slightly that way, slightly here, slightly up there. We all have our own personal perspectives. And because of this distorted, distorted vision we have of the world and what goes on in it, due to many factors of our personality, what's happened to us in our lives, you know, our experiences, education, and all the rest of the things that I've said already. That's going to be, dist that's our distortion view, and the truth will look like it looks like to each and every one of us. And it's not that any one of us is right or wrong. Um, perhaps we're all right, really. I think I'd say, if you see the truth, you know the truth, then that is right for you. And you must talk to someone else and you should find similarities to people that understand the truth then uh, you'll, you should find similarities between you and these other people but it may not be exactly the same in fact i doubt very much it will be the same because of this uh, very unique personal view we have on it so i come to this from my own personal distorted view of this gross physical reality in which we are experiencing at this moment. I was just after watching this video recently, the Rob Moore one, you should look him up. I'll put links to both Rob Moore and uh, this interview with Andrew Bridgen in the description below. I just found that it seems to be, it may be just me, but it seems to me a, a question that's been asked a lot recently. Over the last little while, who really rules the world? I know for Rob Moore, it's his, one of, he said it's one of his questions he asks everyone now that he interviews. Influencers and, and people with high, high status of some description or are in the media who have a unique perspective themselves from their angle, from their business. And it's a good question. Uh, this tends to be very similar. So for me, if you can point to someone or some people, some families, or some organisations, these are ruling the world. I would say I can guarantee you, they are not. Because those who have true power over the planet, those truly control everything, you have no idea who they are. These are just levels. So you have the levels of the organisations like the WEF, I think Klaus Schwab is even stepping down. He's been got rid of. He's done some very weird things in the press with his Star Trek like get up. And there's been rumours of how he spends his private time, which we won't get into here. And I think they've, uh, they're shuffling him sideways out of the door, exit stage left, making way for someone new. And so that's not permanent, you know, that's, he's just, yeah, they come and they go. It's just an organisation. It changes. Same with the WHO. You have, what's his name, Ted Ross. Guilty of some, perhaps, human crimes himself in his own country. Originally, if you want to look that up. Just saying. Hearsay. <coughs> I'm not making any accusations. Accusations. Uh, but here we're coming and going. But the organisation will be still there. And... They're run probably by banking groups and banking families who may have also have a say in what's going on in the world. A lot of people would agree with, with that. 
or do away with that, what conspiracy theorists, etc. But again, I say, that's just another level, because you know who they are. They're not hidden. Those who have true power, those who are truly in control, they don't want you to know who they are. They have no interest in you ever knowing who they are. And you will never know who they are, because they have the power to conceal themselves. Already, at the banking level, and the governments, of course, you have the governments, you have the government parties, the so-called in the UK, the Tories and the Labour, and they're just two sides of the same coin. Andrew Bridgen says himself, as he's seen through the veil of things, that uh, when you have one changeover of government, it's just a baton changeover. All of the main policies, etc., remain the same. The goals remain the same. Sticking to the agenda 2030s is, is the same. This is not different. Things do not change because they're just wheeling out the orders of those who do control it. <clears throat> this is just one level. And so all the parties, you know, you, you have the illusion of voting, but you're not voting for anything. You're just being kept in your little cage. It's not a very nice feeling, is it? Not a nice thing to say. We're all being kept um, conditioned. We're conditioned pretty much from birth, really. So by the time you can just about walk and talk, you just get into grips with that. So you're really fresh in the world. You're sent off to go to somewhere that conditions you. And it's called school. Doesn't matter if it's public or private, whether you pay lots of money for it, or it's a free state school. Conditioning is the same. You learn to get up and go to school, have lunch now, work now, go home now. We're teaching you this. Teaching, is it teaching? You have to learn this and you repeat back to us what we tell you. And if you don't repeat back exactly what we say, you fail. You'll be punished for it. Don't try and think differently. You just do what's said in the book and you give the answers they want to see on the paper. Because we need to know that you've been conditioned properly. And that's kind of an extreme state. There are lots of useful things you learn at school. Reading and writing. Basic arithmetic. Or even more advanced arithmetic. But as we know in quantum physics and etc. is where all the basic rules break down and become pointless. Things change again. But in general, in the world, these are useful tools. It's not... Uh, let's not uh, get away from that. You don't have to go to school to do that. It can be all done very differently, in a different way. Or well, schools can be run in a different way. But you're basically taught to conform. Everyone wears a uniform. Everyone looks the same. Of course, I understand the argument that some kids may have more money than others. And so if there's no uniforms, some people would dress in more expensive kit than others. And the ones that couldn't afford it would stand out and therefore be victims of bullies, etc. Which is the case outside of school, probably not necessarily just in the school. And there are some some valid arguments for that. But really, it's a case of five days a week you go to a place of work and you do what you're told as an authority and you obey authority and you repeat back what you're told. You don't argue. You keep your head down. Be a good little worker. You leave school, you go to work, of course you can see it already, it's the same thing. You obey authority, you do what you're told, you keep your head down, don't argue back. Do what we tell you to do, we'll give you some money, just enough to get by. You'll be able to eat, have somewhere to sleep. But you'll be doing that for the rest of of your working life and at the moment it's up to your 67 years old you may live to your 70 75 average age is about 80 to 85 now i don't know what kind of quality you'll have in those years but all of your best quality life is before all of that and this is all conditioning and controlling and they give you these goals you must have although so it used to be the 1.6 k 
car, a three bedroom house and the wife and two kids. And people still strive for that. I think these families fall apart nowadays in the general decline of civilization that's going on. But they're still there and you must own your house. So you didn't get a mortgage that ties you to working like a dog for the rest of your working life. Unless you're lucky and get a good job, you can retire early. And that's really what you should be doing if you can. But the point is, this is all a setup. We've all been set up to be controlled for all of this life. It's a, whole, it's a whole system. Where was I going with that with who really rules the world? Well, they really create all these systems that then control the people. The education system and all the rest. And how we run our countries, etc. What's beyond these organisations and these people? There's something higher up. I think you have to keep going higher. So when you look at it, you look at these things and you look at things like the decline of civilizations. As I say, we're in decline. Everyone says, well, you know, Rome fell, got too big and it fell. This is a natural process. I think even Rob Moore stated this in his interview I saw recently. Ah, yeah, wicked. The West is now declining. The East nations, the bricks are coming up. We've had our turn, now it's their turn. So it's just a natural, like it's a natural process. That's conditioning, I noticed the conditioning straight away. He's been taught that, he's been listening to that. That's how it is. No, I don't think that is. I think pretty much everything we can think of is contrived. Do you think the Ukraine war was just something that sprang up? Putin just decided he wanted Ukraine? No, you have to do some homework. You have to look at history and you have to look at Putin saying that he doesn't want any weapons, military bases or missile bases coming with it within his board, near to the borders of Russia. You know, the whole decades he's been saying that. A long time. And yet NATO, America, I would say. America is NATO, I guess. It's supposed to be combined countries, but... I think America calls calling the shots probably by the looks of it. Uh, they, they they started moving in and they're going to put missile missile bases in in Ukraine, which is right on their doorstep, etc. So, and he's been telling them ages, don't do that. You, you know, we're going to come to blows. This is not right, but they've been doing it. So, you know, everyone's get told it's all propaganda. Everyone's told lies about how things start. The Vietnam War. If you look it up, yeah, of course, black flag events, as they call them. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin, when the American ship went down, turns out, I think it's a matter of record now, that Americans... ...get involved in the Vietnamese War. That's a big mistake, wasn't it? And uh, I think, I'm not an expert on these things in the history, but... World War Two, I think Hitler did a thing in Poland where he he made it look like the Polish attacked a German base or something, where, where it was him doing it. And it's, it's black flag. You can look all these things up. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, you can research them, and you still might not believe it. Of course, you might not believe in so-called conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Like that. that is just a term used by people who want to talk down uh, truth. So but that's up to you what you think. What your truth is, is yours. And I say it's unique to you. And what you want to believe is up to you. I can't tell you what to believe. And so basically I'm saying that everything is contrived. So all the wars pretty much contrived for the last, I don't know how many years, decades at least. Um, the fall of Rome, experts can talk about the fall of Rome and they're experts on things, of course. But you can look up history and history, how history has been altered. History is written by the winners, is the saying, which is true. So it may not always be exactly as you think it is. <clears throat> there was uh, this area called Tartaria, which is quite interesting. And no one ever talks about or thinks it doesn't sort of exist. But that's like a hidden part of history, apparently. You can look these things up, but I'm making a, I'm trying to build a case here, you know, trying to make a point. 
And if you look, so I think that the decline of the West, when you look at it, and you can look at it now because it's happening now, is the mass immigration uh, into the United States is deliberate. The mass immigration into the UK is deliberate. They can stop that. It's not really that hard. How many billions have they given France to try and stop uh, immigrants coming across the water in rubber dinghies? What have they got? A small, tiny police force that wanders up and down the beach occasionally. It's never got a chance of hardly catching anything. Why don't they just shoot the dinghies before they even get in the water? It's just rubber dinghies. You can stop them. It's very easy. But the amount of money that they've spent, they could easily have us build up a new force, a new strategic force that patrols the beaches constantly and they just wouldn't get a chance to even get to the water. You know, you'd say, oh, the cost. Well, actually, you know, they, they've already used that money, the cost of that sort of thing. It's a, it's a con. They're trying to stop people. No, they're not trying to stop people. I think it's all deliberate. It's, they want people to get in. They want the slow decline. This is the deliberate decline of the West. Uh, you just need to look at it. You believe it or not, it's up to you. I don't care. You can believe it or not. But you can look into it, it is interesting. And so there's a deliberate decline of the West. From my view, from my distorted window of perspective of truth. Got all the political parties, you know, the whole thing is a rigged system. You get the illusion of voting for something, but you're not voting for anything different. It's all been costing. So the whole game is rigged. So Andrew Bridgen, again, he said about the dinghies, actually, from uh, the migrants, he said they were, they're reusing the same dinghies. What? Reusing the same dinghies? He said, yeah, they, they go over. Somehow the dinghies make their way back to France, and they use the same dinghies to come across again. So he's a man who has inside information. I don't have inside information. Well, I found it very interesting. But it's just, for me, nothing new. It's just confirmation of what I already believed was going on. There's a big game played, and uh, we are the pawns in the massive game of, I wouldn't even call it chess, really. It's not really that masterful. It's not really that kind. So if the, say, the fall of Rome or, and or Tartaria, maybe, and other civilizations, we know there's ancient civilizations and it looks like there was quite advanced ancient civilizations when you look at all the stonework, etc. Baalbek, Kobleki Tepe, the pyramids, the arguments, never-ending arguments of the age of the pyramids, etc. And in it's inside the pyramids, you see hieroglyphs all over the place, don't you? But inside the main pyramids, are they hieroglyphs? There's nothing. Yeah, so it's not the same thing. They were used for something else. Up to you to decide what it is. I'm not having that conversation. I don't need to know personally. So there's a massive game going on. Um, the, the hiding of history, the rewriting of history. Control of people, all the political systems are controlled, wars are controlled. This is not the work of the WEF, you know, they're the newcomers. They're just they're pawns, they are pawns, they're just a level of the game. <coughs> Politicians are just levels of the game. I'm not saying that. Even the polit you know, politicians don't know what's going on, they might. Those at the top know it's a game. Again, the Andrew Bridgen, which I watched recently, which is why it spurred me into. Having this conversation, that's Andrew Bridger was saying something again about the politicians and about, oh yes, it was, I think it was, was it Tony Blair? And was it Tony Blair? It might have been Tony Blair, King Cameron maybe. And he was trying to, or Cameron, I can't remember. He was saying, yeah, he went to them with some problems, he wanted to do this and that, and he wanted to do, so this is not the way to run a Conservative Party, we want to do it like this, we've got to be good for the people, we want to make their lives better. And they looked at him and said, Andrew, it's just a game. That's what they said to him, literally. Apparently. Apparently, it's just a game. That's right. And they realise they're just in a game. Who's running the game then? So, if, say, all these old civilizations and Rome, 
And now the change, which I can see, and you can see if you look carefully, is deliberate. A down, a crumbling of the Western civilization, the big countries, the USA, the UK, Europe being brought into a war with Russia. Unnecessary, unneeded. Who, who's controlling all of this and for what reason? And all these things, like I say, going back in time. Now, humans, from my perspective, from my understanding, from what I can see, what I've seen, humans they might tend to think a hundred years ahead. Because a man, let's say, or a woman, but let's say a man, generally the culprits, <laughs> a man could want to look after his kids and his grandkids. He might see great grandkids, but you know, kids and grandkids, or maybe grandkids. I mean, he's gonna, that's going to span maybe a hundred years. He could, he'll want the best for his kids and his grandkids. Let's say in general, if he doesn't have kids too young. And generally, you're talking about looking a hundred years ahead and how they'll be all right for that. And I've noticed in policies and things, it doesn't go beyond a hundred years. This seems to be the short-sightedness of humanity. It's probably been just been uh, conditioned into them with the education system and everything else. And by the media, of course, the media is all owned. Things like UFOs recently. Uh, nowadays, they call it NHI, non-human intelligence. That's another subject. We'll get to that in a minute, maybe. But these things and these civilizations coming and going, I would say they're probably all contrived. Maybe not all, but certainly this one is. And I'd say it's someone who's got a view that is well beyond a hundred years. This is a thousand years in the making. Let's say you're a, a being who lives a thousand years. And I say, from what I understand and my experience, a thousand years, it's not perhaps unusual for an extraterrestrial, a gross physical extraterrestrial, or and maybe even longer for those that are less physical and more spiritual. We won't get into that yet. And if you are, then you can see that far. So then you can play a game that's a thousand years long. And I think that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at plans and things that are going on that are beyond the range of normal human thinking. So who's above the organisations, the bankers, for want, of a better, uh, for the want of a better word, you can change the letter B for whatever you like, and who's controlling them? And you don't know who they are. But I would say they're quite long lived and their plan is long. But when your plan is long, you can play with a generation or three or four of humans, slowly turning around the education system, slowly turning around civilizations that are up and wanting other ones to come in. I've got more of a plan that you like, and you can fade it one in and one out over a hundred years or two hundred years or three hundred years. It doesn't matter because your plan is beyond a thousand years. And I say this is what we're looking at. And so this recent terminology changed from not alien or ET, but they made it official. But well, they changed UFO to, so they've changed the terminology from UFO to UAP. Why do they do that? Why would you do that? Because it has broadened the term. UFO is an unidentified flying object. That's a solid, of course, physical object, isn't it? Really? A UAP is an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Phenomenon that covers a whole stack of bases that goes beyond physical phenomena. And now they're using NHI. So alien extraterrestrial is a gross physical being like you and me. It's coming from another star system. But NHI, non-human intelligence. Again, that's a very broad base. That covers AI maybe. It also covers what they're calling crypto terrestrials, beings that live inside the planet, interdimensional beings. So now we're talking about beings that aren't a threat from space, 
but they are a threat from the space around you, interdimensional. You're talking in uh, multi, multiversal worlds, universes that are here, but they're just a vibrational, a different vibration than what we are. So they exist in the same kind of space, if you like. But we're unaware of each other. Or at least we're unaware of the ones that are higher. The higher vibrations, we're unaware of, we can't see them, but higher vibrational beings or higher places can always see the lower vibrational places and beings. And you just need to watch my other videos to understand why that is. But there's some talk, I thought that the what is the next thing to break down civilization? Maybe civilization as a whole, not just the Western civilization. I'm not sure what their plan is exactly. But I think they're losing the grip a bit. Now, why? Uh, maybe I'll come back to that. But let's stick with the NHI. Yeah, so I've explained it's broadening horizons. So if they want to bring in a fake alien invasion. But you're, if, if you're in the UFO community, etc., you would have heard about this. It's been bandied around for probably decades now. And Dr. Stephen Greer, he talks a lot about the fake alien invasion. He thinks that's a real plan. But these things actually play into the hands of that. Because they were not expect, expecting physical craft necessarily to come out of the skies like some very dodgy B-movies or the Alien and Mars Attacks movies, uh, where it's all very physical and everyone shoots with guns. And now we're talking about craft that come that can just appear and disappear, which UFOs do, of course, and beings that can appear and disappear, which they do, of course. But if you want to stage a fake invasion using holographic technology, you just need to turn on the holographic equipment and you can make something appear. That's just appeared. But if you are pre programming people, conditioning people to understand the concept of non human intelligence that isn't necessarily out there somewhere, and UAPs, which are a phenomenon, then you're being primed. And I'd say you could possibly be being primed, be being primed for a fake alien invasion that could come. They could come out of the ground, crypto terrestrials apparently are being banded around in the halls of American justice system, White House or whatever. Don't follow that too close, I just listen to when people are talking about it a bit. Because disclosure is not really coming. Anyway, if it's a disclosure, it's what they want to disclose, and it's anything that's in favour of their of the plan. I say their plan. Yeah, their plan, whoever they are. The minions are carrying out the plan. And then suddenly, you know, beings can crop, pop out of the ground anywhere and attack you. And uh, I'm not saying that they can't create beings either that are quite convincing. They could come out and attack you. But it's a, it's a very dark world, all that kind of thing. And craft that they can make look like they're coming. It could be holographic from satellites. It doesn't have to come from the ground. I mean, they could they could quite easily stage a fake alien invasion, but they'd need something hard. They'd, they would need <coughs> some hard craft to look at, which they can always do because they, you know, there's a percentage of UFOs or UOP flying around, which are American hardware or from uh, these private companies, of course, build American stealth planes and that sort of thing, and DARPA. Engage with companies, you know, who can make these things. So that's all possible. I'm not saying it is. I'm not sure I'm still buying it's going to be a fake alien invasion. Because I would have thought not many people would believe it nowadays. But then most people, are not like me, has been involved in UFOs and aliens since I was 12. Uh, most people, it's still a fringe subject. They just don't really pay attention to it. It's probably the vast percentage of the population that's kept that way. And that's why there's no disclosure. And uh, brings me to another point. 
So why disclose a multi-dimensional beings, maybe, and a UAP phenomena craft, but not hard solid craft from other star systems? Oh, they couldn't get here because technology is too far ahead. Or it's just not possible. We have a poor grasp of physics, let's be honest. The phys most of the physics we use, they know is wrong. <laughs> and when you get to quantum physics, it breaks down completely. Uh, and there are civilizations out there that are billions of years old. Civilizations, billions of years old. You can't imagine what they can do and what they have. And their grasp of physics and their grasp of what they know of beyond just this gross physical plane of existence and how they might use a minute play that. But they're not talking about that. They're talking about crypto terrestrials, interdimensional beings, even these whistleblowers. Now for me, those are really controlling the world will always remain hidden and they'll do anything they can to make them keep themselves hidden. They don't want to be known. How can they carry out the, whatever the nefarious things they're doing behind the scenes? If people know who they are, yeah, they can't. And so I think we're dealing with most likely gross physical beings who are probably quite long lived. And the last thing they want you to know is that they exist. And that is why, even with all this supposed disclosure that's going on, very little truck is given to those gross physical beings that are coming from around us, that are already here. They do talk about beings that are already here, but in these other crypto terrestrial ways or whatever. I'm not really talking about those, but actually they control the planet. So who controls the planet? It's not humans. I'll tell you that now, that's for sure. It isn't. I think there are lots of eyes on us watching what's going on, but I don't know all of the details. And that's what I say. And that's from my own experience. I can say there are many, many, many beings. Oh, when you look at the, uh, the Bible, and I'm not a Bible expert, but you look back at the historical Bible and you look at how long some of these people lived, it was about 900 years. 900 years. Like I say, I know there are beings that live a thousand years, about a thousand years, and they look like you and me. They look like you and me. Humans don't just exist on this planet. Us or versions of us live in many other places. This is what I've come to believe through my own experiences. I uh, see so in the Bible they say that, and if you look, I think if you look back at the uh, Sumerian tablets, and someone has been talking about this recently also, I can't remember his name right now, but he says, you know, if you look at them, you, they say how long certain kings have been in, in power. Uh, it, oh, actually, I'll mention another one. And uh, they're up to 6,000 or 17,000 years single king. These are not embellished or made to look them look so powerful. This is just, you know, recording it in stone. This takes quite a while. <laughs> they've, they've done this and, uh, or maybe it didn't take too long because they probably had technology beyond what we think they did. But anyway, it's just a recording of history. <clears throat> and I saw this with uh, this video. I can't remember his name. But I'll put it on the screen somewhere. I'll find him. And uh, he was working with this town, is it Enzo somebody, who's an actual uh, scholar on the original Bibles uh, in the original language. And he was determining how long, and I think he determined that some of these people, who's the father of so-and-so and the son and son of so-and-so, that eventually turned out to be more than a thousand years old, I think, several thousand maybe. So we're talking about beings. So there we have some evidence of beings in the world, affecting the world, having some control in the world that are thousands of years old. So who rules the world? Non-humans are ruling the world. Non-human beings are ruling the world. I think they're probably gross physical beings because I think they would ha probably have to be because that's why they're interested in the planet and us, because we're gross physical beings. So they need us for something, some reason. But what that is, I don't know. Some people say we might be food for some. We might be other kind of donators of who knows what. Or maybe we're just uh, hostages. 
some galactic larger game of chess. Quite likely, I would say. I have heard such things. So that is what I say about who rules the world. Most people are looking at just some lower levels, the levels that we can see from the ground. But it's not them. Make your own minds up, do some research. Well, I hope you found this interesting. And please like and subscribe and watch some other videos. Please share it if you think it's worth sharing with people who might be interested. All right, thanks for listening. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.